today we're going to learn how to turn an ordinary picture frame into a stained glass masterpiece. So the first thing you need to do is get into your picture frame. And this is one of those projects that you want to keep your hands clean um, so that you don't mess up your work surface. So once you have your frame unwrapped, pull out your backing and then we're going to pull out everything except the glass. I have this lovely rose that I downloaded off the website Reality Daydream. Um, and what I'm going to do is I am going to tape my, just a little bit, I'm gonna tape it face down in the um, picture frame as if I was framing it. If you want to, you can use colored pencils or crayons or markers to color your picture first so that you remember which colors are you want to use where. So I'm just going to center my picture and put four little pieces of tape on the corners. Now I'm going to pile everything back into the frame. And put my little tabs down. So because I'm going to make this a, uh, a stained glass, the first thing I'm going to do is this is white glue. Plain old regular glue, just like it says on the label. Um, it's 50 cents at the Dollar Tree because it comes in a two pack. I've put a little bit of black paint in it. So what I'm gonna do is give this a really good shake um, and then use the nozzle to trace around all of my black outlining and that will be the letting of my stained glass. Um, it's called leading because it was originally lead strips that bound all the glass together. This image of um, R2-D2 is a good example of why you need to make sure that your outlining is dry before you move on to your fill-in. As an experiment, I tried to do this picture without letting things dry. And as you can see all throughout here, I have a lot of spillover of blue and black inside of my white. You can also see in this one, which is the second one that I did, if you can, always pull the glue and don't push it. So if you're holding the glue, you always want to be pulling, not pushing because the like right here, pull, pull, push, and you can see how the tip of the nozzle pushed the glue slash paint around a little. You can see it there and there and there. So if you can, you know, if you can arrange it, always pull. You can see it up here. So by pulling, and then coming here and pulling, and then pulling up, or even rotating the picture so that you can, you know, pull from the other direction. So I could have rotated around and pulled. You should get a more consistent, straighter, neater edge. Now, if you look at this picture versus this picture, which is the actual free coloring book page that I based, that I traced, the same as I traced the uh, rose picture, 
you can see that here there are three lines. Here I only did two because you can see here that adding the third line, and in fact trying to add this little line here, I just ended up with a big blob of space. Um, it, there was not really enough room to add all of those lines. Um, you can see I omitted this block here because it would have been a tight squeeze and would have just turned into a blob. These two little rectangles, you can see them on here and all of it just blends together. Um, so if you have practice and you have very fine motor skill or if you've decided to upgrade from the nozzle on a white glue bottle to something with more of like a needle tip, you can buy, you know, needle tip precision um, bottles on Amazon for not that much. You can also get syringes, which might give you a little bit better control. This is an older bottle. I've done a lot, like a dozen or so images using it, so it might be that the hole is a little worn out. You know, so that might be when you can do as much detail as this is. You can see for the little one, little squares here, I just went ahead and filled them in black. I omitted the little curves, which are kind of on here. You can just see the black line. So take a little bit of artistic license in order to make it something that is more manageable for yourself, something that you can have a finished product that you are happy with as opposed to something that's just looks overfilled and cluttered. So this is a slightly older bottle of glue. Ah, oh come on. And it may look a little gray on the glass at the moment, but remember that Elmer's glue dries clear. So all I will be left with is the black paint. Um, you do want to go really slow and careful and not really squeeze because you do you are making nice thin delicate lines i think i might be screwing mine up just a little bit that's okay because it's just a sample If you like this technique and you want to decorate your home using this technique, you um, are able to find much more precision bottles online. Amazon has several bottles with precision um, needle tips. You could get syringes, you could just get puff paint, um, you know, like the three dimensional paint at any store and use that. Um, but this is just a very um, quick and easy kind of entry-level way into making stained glass. And for this little bit of fencing, I'm not even really opening the nozzle of the bottle. I'm just using the tip to drag some of the puddles to some of my fin spots. Alright, so now I am going to let this dry fully. And once it is dry, I will be able to start putting in my color. Very few times does stained glass kind of float. So one of the things that you can do is make the letting go all the way out to the edges. And all I'm doing is basically a plus sign and a X so that my um, enchanted rose looks a little bit more connected to the frame. And this is definitely one of those projects where the more time and care that you take with, uh, while you're working on it, the nicer it will be in your final product. So 
So all I'm going to do is prepare my straws, a little pinch, a snip, a snip on the other side. it off and then a little snip to make a point. Alright, so I'm going to use a red, a green, and a white. So I've got one straw for each color that I'm going to use. Um, you could economize on straws by doing one color at a time and just snipping off and repointing it. So what I'm going to do is put some glue just a little puddle and I'm going to take a little bit of red and only need a very little bit and mix it into my glue until I end up with a little thing of red glue. So I'm gonna use my little pointed scoop that I made and put my red into the areas that I want to be red. So I'm using the straw both as a scoop and as a stylus. I'm using the little point that I cut in to drag the glue around to the corners. You don't need a lot. Um, the glue does tend to spread out fairly well. So now I'm just going to repeat the same process, but with all of my other colors. Now, if you were to go out and buy um, straws specifically to use for this project, doing it at home in the future, I, I would recommend getting the um, the straw is meant for like snow cones that have the bigger scoop on the end. Then you just have to put a point into it. But uh, these little ones aren't that bad. Don't need your paint to kind of pull. You just need it to cover the glass. So like this one's a little full. I can scoop it up. Move it over to here, and this will kind of self level itself back down to fill it.
we're going to proceed ahead. So I am going to open the little tabs. And I can throw away this part, and this part, and this part, and this part. I'm going to peel up the tape. And now you can see it is beautiful stained glass rose from both sides of the glass. I've had my hot glue gun heating up. Um, this is not a requirement, it's just a kind of a best practice. It's not actually one that I've done, but I've seen it heard about. So I'm just going to run glue on the inside of my frame. just one bead all the way around and I'm going to put my picture my glass back into the frame there we go. and now I'm also going to bend down all of my little tabs and now I have a finished product. I can just take the glue string out of there. So now you can hang this in a window 